Abhishek? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Coming to our case history, we had a woman at our antenatal uh, clinic, that is 26-year-old primary mother, who is mar married life of six months, and she had it came with uh, uh, complaints of amenorrhea of two months. We did a UPT, which was positive, and uh, it was her first antenatal visit. And we did a routine uh, screening uh, blood investigations, which included uh, all the antenatal investigations in which HBSAG positive was noted. So here uh, today, our uh, discussion is, uh, uh, the objective of our discussion is when to screen for hepatitis B, which test to be used for screening and the management of hepatitis B in the pregnant mother when to treat the chronic hepatitis B and what drug we have to use to treat and the mode of delivery and regarding breastfeeding. So today we will be discussing in detail regarding these aspects. As we all know, hepatitis B is a DNA, double standard DNA virus and it is transmissible through the mother to child transmission is common and percutaneous and sexual exposure. HBS AG uh, in general population uh, the positivity ranges from 1.1 to 12.2 percent with an average prevalence of 3 to 4 percent. The chronic hepatitis B infection, uh, the hepatocellular carcinoma uh, the, is 40 to 50 percent of the cases we see the chronic hepatitis B infection and 20 to 30 percent of cirrhosis in India we see chromic hepatitis B infection. Pregnant women with chronic hepatitis B virus are an important population to target in order to decrease the overall burden of hepatitis B infection worldwide. So to, uh, we are discussing in detail because of these aspects. This is the slide showing the epidemiology and public health burden. That is worldwide, we can see 250 million chronic HBSAG carrier. And uh, in India, it is two to, the prevalence of HBSAG is two to 4%. And uh, there is increase in some European okay. countries. That is migration yeah. from high endemic countries. Oh my God, brother, brother. Increasing prevalence in some endemic countries like Taiwan is due to improved vaccination, effective treatment, and improved socioeconomic status. The risk for chronic hepatitis B virus. Uh, it is inversely related to the age of exposure. If the uh, exposure is in infant, that is if infants exposed to HPV, the chronicity will be chronic infection, robust chronic infection in 90%. In, if it is exposed to toddlers and young children, the chronicity will be 50%. And in adults, it is 5% as the viral clearance is more in adults. These are the different phases or stages of uh, hepatitis B virus. Once the person is infected, these are the phases, he, uh, the different stages he goes through. That is the immune tolerant phase. This phase is seen in hepatitis B virus transmission at birth, one to two years of life. Here, HPAG will be positive and there will be high oral viral load, but no elevation of the liver enzymes, that is transaminases, and there will be minimal activity in liver as there is no immunological response. That's the reason we call it as immune tolerant. Most of our childbearing uh, age group women will be in this immune tolerant phase. So that's the reason uh, why we don't uh, immediately start the antiviral therapy that we will discuss in later slides. So there will be minimal inflammation and the age group is around 20. That is the active reproductive age group. That is immune active or clearance with increased immune response. What happens is the hepatitis B viral DNA level decreases and the liver enzymes fluctuate as we have shown in the graph. There will be active inflammation in the liver that will be ending in HBEAG negative and HBE antibody positive, which is the HBEAG zero conversion. This is HBEAG zero conversion. Ongoing activity could progress to fibrosis and liver cirrhosis and epithelial carcinoma. Next stage is inactive or immune control. That is, HBEAG remains negative in this phase two. And in 70 to 85% with viral load, less than 2000 international unit per ml with persistently normal liver enzymes, but hepatitis activity may continue in some. And the fibrosis, cirrhosis noted in those who had progressed to in immune active phase. That is the reason we call it as minimal or inactive. Next is the immune escape or reactivation phase where the progression from HBE, AG negative 
in active phase to HBE AG negative hepatitis B with mutation in core or core promoter region of HBV genome resulting in HBE AG negative but with continued viral replication and progression in liver diseases. So the second stage that is immune active clearance and immune escape or reactivation are the active hepatitis is seen here and the treatment is very much essential in these two phases. Whereas in immune tolerant and inactive or immune control phases, the treatment is not necessary. So when to screen and what test we have to use? So, we have certain recommendations that is for diagnosis of chronic hepatitis B infection in adults, we can either use the rapid diagnostic test or the laboratory based immune assay format. So, where do we use RDT and where do we use that laboratory based immune assay? It is all the settings what we have in our practice. In settings where existing laboratory testing is already available and accessible, laboratory based immune assays are recommended as the preferred assay format. In settings where there is limited access, then we go in for rapid diagnostic tests. So coming to the recommendations, as I previously mentioned, so either rapid diagnostic test or laboratory based immune assay format can be used and that meets the minimum quality, safety, performance standards. So it is recommended to detect hepatitis B surface antigen. Coming to the management of women of the childbearing age, this is the concern of discussion today. The decision to initiate therapy in women of childbearing age must weigh the risk of liver progression, concerns for vertical transmission, the risk of perinatal flares, possible medication side effects, adverse fatal outcomes. Typically, women of childbearing age are not candidates for the antiviral therapy. Why? Going to the early stage of HBV disease as we have discussed in the previous slide, that is immune tolerant phase. Patients with high viremia may benefit from antiviral therapy when planning to become pregnant since it reduces the risk of mother to child transmission. The pregnancy and HBV related liver disease, that means how is, is there any interlink whether the HBV infections progresses the uh, uh, pregnancy related complications or whether there is any effect of pregnancy on HBV related liver diseases. Let us see in this slide. Chronic hepatitis B infection alone does not adversely affect the rates of fertility or fetal outcome. Women with decompensated cirrhosis as a result of HBV infection have a impaired fertility. Why? There is associated hormonal imbalances and are at risk of maternal and perinatal death and gestational hypertension, fetal growth restriction, preterm birth, abruption, these are seen. On contrary, pregnancy itself does not directly impact on the HBV related liver diseases. Alterations in the hormonal levels during pregnancy may be involved in the acute flares during pregnancy due to changes in the viral load and level of the liver enzymes. This is the chart uh, showing uh, the management part. See, whenever the patient visits, this is according to the AS, AASLD and ACOG guidelines. We have taken this chart from that is whenever the uh, pregnant mother walks into our uh, antenatal clinic, what, the, what does we do? We do routine antenatal investigations and we also do along with HBCG, HCV, HIV, VDRL, HCV. So these are the tests involved. And here, usually anti-HBS, whenever the HBS AG is negative, we are supposed to do anti-HBS AG also, antibody to HBS AG, but we are not doing due to the financial constraints. What do we do if both are negative? We vaccinate the high-risk patients and vaccinate the infants at birth. What if it is positive? What do we do when a mother is positive? We actually find out if the disease is active or there is any cirrhosis, then we consider the treatment under the medical gastroenterologist. What next we do? The test for the sexual partner and test the household contacts. What if it is positive HPSAG? Then we do HBV viral DNA load at first visit when she's come as positive and at 28 weeks. Then we look for the liver enzymes, transaminases, HBE, AG, and anti-HBE. Anti if the HBV viral load is more than 
2 lakh international unit per ml, then we consider the treatment at 28 to 32 weeks. Because we would have finished the organogenesis period, everything, and then from 28 to 32 weeks, if the viral load is more, then we consider the treatment. And we will continue the treatment and consider stopping the therapy 0 to 3 months after the delivery. What if the viral load is less than 2 lakh, then no antiviral therapy is required. But consider if the there is preterm labor or prior child with immunoprophylaxis failure, then we have to consider the antiviral therapy. The infant receives both active and passive immunization at birth and monitor the postpartum for flares. And at 1, 3, and 6, we have to monitor the viral DNA and liver enzymes. So, HBV viral load is not available. Then what should we do? We are at a taluk place or a rural place where we are working. So, if the HBV viral load is not available, then what next we are going to do? The WHO recommends that in settings in which antenatal HBV DNA testing is not available, then go for HBE antigen testing, which can be used as an alternative to HBV DNA viral load testing to determine the eligibility for the TNFV prophylaxis to prevent the mother to child transmission. How do we monitor monitoring and the treatment of pregnant women? So, the first we do as we discussed serological testing, that is HPSAG testing in pregnant women by using either rapid diagnostic test or laboratory based immunosay, whichever the settings we are in. So, then if it is positive, if negative. Uh, if it is positive, then we are going to do the viral load DNA. And if it is not, then HBEAG is taken and assessed for cirrhosis. If HBE DNA viral load is less than 2 lakh and if HBE AG is negative without any cirrhosis, no maternal tenofovir prophylaxis is required. Defer long-term maternal tenofovir treatment but monitor and reassess accordingly according to the WHO recommendations. Next is HBE DNA more than 2 lakh HBE AG positive without cirrhosis. Start maternal tenofovir prophylaxis at 28 weeks of pregnancy until at least birth. Then reassess for the long-term maternal tenofovir treatment after delivery. Then, if there is presence of cirrhosis or HPV DNA is more than 2 lakh, persistently abnormal transaminases, start long-term uh, maternal tenofovir treatment and monitor accordingly. So, coming to the infant interventions, the hepatitis B birth dose vaccination of the infant followed by 2 to 3 doses of vaccine and later passive immunization is also given to the infant. So, this is the slide, uh, two slides we discussed. That is pregnant woman who is on antiviral therapy prior to pregnancy and the pregnant woman who is not on antiviral therapy prior to pregnancy. So these are the treatment options for chronic hepatitis B virus in pregnancy. That is uh, interferons, lamivudin, telvivudin, entefavir, adifovir and tenofovir. Tenofovir and telvivudin are the category B drugs which, are, which can be used and we commonly use tenofovir. How do we manage a pregnant woman on antiviral therapy uh, who is on antiviral therapy prior to pregnancy? Pregnant patients on antiviral therapy prior to pregnancy, if she is on entacover or adifover, switch on to tenofovir. Mild to moderate, if it is mild to moderate disease, hepatitis, uh, hepatic fibrosis stage 0 to, to monitor the patient every 3 months. If it is an advanced hepatic uh, disease and hepatic fibrosis is 3 to stage 3 to 4, monitor every 1 to 2 months, consider uh, that pregnancy has a high risk pregnancy and she has to be managed in a tertiary care center. We have to do endoscopy to rule out viruses, portal hypertensive gastropathy. See, this is the slide showing the incremental approach for hepatitis B prevention. As we have already discussed, what we used to do is that give the three doses of hepatitis B vaccine to the infant, including the timely birth dose within 24 hours. After that, what we did is HBSAG testing, linkage to care and follow-up of infants when available, and also passive immunization, that is immunoglobulins for infants born to HBSAG positive and HBE AG positive mothers. Maternal antiviral prophylaxis is high maternal HBB DNA viral load or HBE AG positive. Uh, why antiviral prophylaxis in mother is required? That is the our question. So, what is why is it required? High viral load and or positive for hepatitis B, HBE, AG, there is increased transmission. 
So HPCG positive, HPCG positive women are associated with elevated risk of transmission. That is ranging from 20% in Asia to 32% in Africa, despite despite giving vaccine prophylaxis and passive immunization. That is immunoglobulins. HPCG positive, HBE negative. That is less than 1% transmission in Asia and Africa. Hepatitis B immunoglobulin prophylaxis shortly after birth and maternal peripartum prophylaxis with antivirus can provide additional protection to that provided by the timely birth dose of hepatitis B vaccine. So, as we discussed, the evidence suggests the use of antiviral may suppress the viral load levels and reduce the mother-to-child transmission. 6.1% of women with HIV co-infections uh, with HBV is seen. HIV treatment with tenofovir based antiretroviral therapy provides an opportunity to simultaneously treat those with HBV co-infection and reduce the mother-to-child transmission alongside that of the HIV. So this is the network meta-analysis map for prevention of vertical transmission of hepatitis B virus. See, what is this is the treatment ranking by Sukra value suggested that the maternal uh, tenofovir treatment along with the infant passive, that is immunoglobulins, along with the infant vaccine, 92.9% uh, uh, of the uh, mother to child transmission is prevented. What is the mode of delivery? So does it matter? The Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine uh, states that cesarean section should not be performed for the sole indication of reducing vertical HPV transmission. So the government of India technical guidelines also suggest that uh, the woman with hepatitis B virus is not a reason for considering termination of pregnancy. Similarly, the need for cesarean section should be decided on the obstetric indications and not on the presence of the hepatitis B virus infection. So, LSC is for obstetric indication only, not for the contraindications for delayed clot clamping. Breastfeeding. Should we have to breastfeed or should we not? So, uh, our guidelines, WHO recommends breastfeeding is a must. HBCG, HBE, AG, HBV, DNA are excreted in the breast milk of infected mothers. According to WHO, there is no additional risk of HPV transmission through breastfeeding, even in the absence of immunization. Breastfeeding, when should it be avoided? It should be avoided in cracked or bleeding nipples, as this mixes the serous excretes with breast milk and can potentially lead to transmission of hepatitis B. There is limited data regarding the safety of breastfeeding while on antivirals. The researchers are still going on. The oral nucleoside and nucleotide analogs are known to be secreted in the low levels in the breast milk. So in our index case, the history and management, mother was counseled about her HPCG positive status and the husband was also tested. He was, it, the results came as negative. What's next? We did the HPV viral DNA load was sent, which was 100 international unit per ml. Uh, the significance, as I told, it is more than 2 lakh. The LFP, the normal liver function test was totally normal. That is transaminases bilirubin. Anomaly scan was done. That is normal. She received uh, the iron and folic acid tablets. No other antenatal complications were seen in this patient. And the medical gastroenterologist's opinion was also taken. Uh, patient presented uh, uh, at 32, 32 weeks. The repeat viral DNA load was sent by the medical gastroenterologist. The viral DNA load was not in the significant range for the treatment. And liver function tests were also normal. There was a spontaneous vaginal delivery at 39 weeks. 3.2 kg male baby was delivered and delayed cord clamping was also done. Skin to skin contact given and started on breastfeeding. So coming to the take home message, a serological assay that is either the RD, uh, rapid diagnostic test or laboratory based immune assay format is recommended to detect the HPSAG antigen. Pregnant females with viral load more than 2 lakhs should have a discussion about starting therapy in the third trimester, that is 28 to 32 weeks. HBE antigen can be used in settings where HBV viral load testing is not available. LSCS mode of delivery only for the obstetric indications. Experts suggest that the women in preterm labor or women who had previous child who had failed passive active immunoprophylaxis should also receive therapy regardless of the HPV viral load. First line therapy is tenofovir. Breastfeeding to be initiated as soon as possible. Thank you, everybody. The references taken here are WHO uh, guidelines and the guidelines, technical guidelines from the uh, national government of uh, in India.
fantastic uh, dr chandushri right yeah so it was very very uh, elaborate but then still very simple i think uh, what do you say narayan sir yeah <clears throat> i am audible yes sir yes sir yeah yeah uh, many many congratulations for the organizers and uh, the speaker uh, as you said rightly in a collaborative in depth discussion on uh, an important uh, maternal infection during pregnancy hepatitis b i think uh, uh, she mentioned uh, rightly uh, that uh, presence of uh, with uh, hepatitis b infection is not an indication for cesarean section many people was thinking uh only just want to add a few things uh, to the vision yeah. and delivery particularly uh, like uh, the care what we should take for a, a hepatitis uh, i mean hiv infection in pregnancy similar to that if uh, vision and delivery uh, is undertaken mm -hmm. by the treating opticians i think um, two important points one is i think uh, in centers where they practice fetal monitoring using the uh, Fetal yeah. skull electrodes. I think they should be avoided. Yeah. And another point, similarly, I think we should avoid uh, a, an instrumental delivery like forceps. I think as an application, I think there's only two points. I think I felt I should add to that. Yes. Otherwise, wonderful, fine. Ah, uh, many many congratulations again. Abhishek, can you can I share my screen? I just want to project three slides. Sure, sure, madam, you can do it. Please enable me to share the screen. So in the recent uh, AACOG conference, sir, uh, uh, Dr. Shanti yeah, Kumari uh, had released this book, and I was one of the co-editors for this book. Congratulations! Was, thank you, sir. I am the South Zone Coordinator for the Endocrine Committee of Foxy, sir. I'm in Bangalore. Okay. So uh, we did extensive uh, work on this uh, topic with five uh, different chapters. So I think Dr. Chandushri uh, beautifully covered everything. i just thought i'll add uh, one or two points which are interesting so one is the method of uh, uh, how the what is the method of the vertical trans the transmission it is called mtct is mother to child transmission this is the most important area as you told to control the burden of hepatitis b in the world is to cut them down at the um, mtct or the mother to child uh, Uh, transmission. So these are all the different areas or different stages. It is on the intrauterine. Peripartum is the most uh, important part, and then postpartum. So these are the three areas, and the body is a mechanism. So this I thought is an interesting slide. That is why this because of the peripartum uh, transmission risk is high. Uh, we are we are supposed to repeat the HPV DNA at 28 weeks and initiate treatment around 28 to 32 weeks so that the peripartum uh, transmission is uh, avoided uh, to protect the child and this is a flow chart i prepared uh, in hepatitis b it she has covered almost everything just to make it a little simpler so all pregnant women have to be screened in the first visit hepatitis b negative retest in high risk women the you know, high risk women who are uh, having multiple sexual partners or who are hiv positive so uh, identify the high risk women and retest them and then vaccinate them you know if the vaccination is going going to give more benefits than the risk of. so we need to vaccinate them and then in the initial test if the hp if she is hbs hg positive we are supposed to do the liver function test hepatitis e antigen and the ultrasound liver to rule out a chronic liver disease or a cirrhosis um so that we need to do it and of course the hpv dna and if your dna is negative then she does not need any antiviral but as, again we need to repeat at 28 weeks because at 28 weeks there can be a flare up and then this is the important stage and the intrapartum stage peripartum stage is the uh, time for transmission so you by you there is a hepatitis b a antigen positive and then you do a hpv dna and if she if that dna is positive any reading more than 20000 we have to refer to the specialist so they will manage better uh, but for uh, for our knowledge sake if the uh, hpv dna copy is less than 2 lakhs she does not need antiviral treatment but still we need to repeat it at 28 weeks and then uh, if it is more than 2 uh, lakhs international unit for mn then we need to start antiviral therapy at 28 
32 weeks plus also in these conditions where the risk of uh, transmission is high and this antiviral therapy has to be continued till 0 to 3 months after the delivery and uh, peripart that is after the delivery and during the pregnancy we need to monitor for flare up of the hepatitis b as chandushri i just wanted to correct you in one point that is the immune tolerant phase happens in the infants or children who are exposed to the hepatitis b infection where their immunity is not well developed that is the reason there is a high dose of uh, high level of hpe and the body cannot fight so it is found generally in the infants and children and this chronic carriers that is an immune inactive state okay so that is the third phase most of our uh, pregnant women for hepatitis b positive incidentally they belong to the third stage that is a immune inactive stage so but still they can go for a flare up during the pregnancy that is the reason we need to monitor uh, if there are any symptoms or we need to monitor with the liver for enzyme and HPV DNA. This needs to be done one, three and six months postpartum. And as she rightly told, all the infants receive uh, this hepatitis B uh, positive woman's uh, baby has to receive the vaccine and the hepatitis B immunoglobulin at birth. I'm sure the pediatricians are going to talk more about it. And then uh, this is just the uh, screen. Here. This is the take home point what we gave in our book. That is, hepatitis B screening is recommended in all pregnant women at the first visit. And the positive women have to undergo further testing and prompt referral to specialists. Tests are repeated at 28 weeks. Hepatitis B vaccine and hepatitis B immunoglobulin to newborn is very critical. And antiviral therapy is recommendation she has already given. And then uh, these are the two drugs, tenofovir and telpividin. This telpividin is not uh, available in India. That's the reason we don't use it. This is the only category B drug which is uh, used uh, uh, for uh, hepatitis B in pregnancy, which is available in India. And then and, and rest everything she has uh, told. Uh, so um, thank you so much. So it's a wonderful uh, discussion, Dr. Chandu. I'm waiting to listen to the pediatricians. Thanks for allowing me to speak. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Chandrika ma'am, for adding experience to today's discussion. So I thank Chandushri for her clear presentation as always. So I now invite Dr. Sunil Sharma, our neonatal fellow at Ovum Hospital, to present the pediatric part. I think we can have questions of both obstetric and pediatric part at the end of the pediatric lecture. And I would also like to invite Dr. Srikant, oh, okay. I'll call pediatric gastroenterologist at Manipal Hospitals. So, who has joined the session today? I think once Sunil presents his session, I think Shrikant sir will add his experience. Uh, Sunil, you can share the screen. Absolutely, your screen is visible. You can start. Hello. Sir, so my screen is visible, sir? Yes, Sunil, your screen is visible. A very good morning, very good evening to everyone. And thank you, Dr. Chandrashiri, for detailed presentation on approach to hepatitis B in pregnancy. So myself, Dr. Sunil Sharma, I will be discussing about the an approach to hepatitis B exposed newborn in next to 10, 15 minutes. So till now we have 26 week, uh, 26 year old primary mother to deliver a healthy baby with birth, birth weight of 3.2 kg. Mother's hepatitis B surface antigen positive, her HBE antigen status was unknown and while, while, while DNA load was less than 2 lakhs IU per ml. So how should we approach in this case? Let's discuss regarding this case. Coming to the learning objective, the, we'll discuss what the, what's the risks of pregnancy transmission and the risk to the new, uh, neonate. And can we breastfeed the baby with mother's hepatitis B positive? And what's the role of vaccination and immunoglobulin? Now, how to follow up the baby born with hepatitis B positive? And and, and then we will discuss about the needlestick injury and how should we vaccinate the healthcare professionals? Coming to the perinatal transmission, 
if we give immunoprophylaxis to the baby, the risk of transmission from mother to child will be less than 2%. If the mother's hepatitis B positive and we are not giving immunoprophylaxis, the risk is up to 90%. The risk factor for transmission, the maximum risk of transmission during the, is during the intrapartum period. And with mother's hepatitis E antigen is positive and viral is more than 2 lakhs international unit per ml. The risk of transmission is negligible, like in, in the position like minor sentences and quarter sentences. And also, hepatitis B positive expecting mother is not a contraindication of cesarean section, as discussed by Chandushri Ma'am also. So coming to breastfeeding and transmission, Chandushri Ma'am already discussed about the breastfeeding is not a contraindication, though hepatitis B viral DNA detected in the colostrum of hepatitis B positive mother. There's no need to panic. If we're giving immunoparflexes to baby, the risk is negligible, and we can safely breastfeed the preterm babies also. Coming to the immunoparflexes, so hepatitis B is a killed vaccine. The Active substances are hepatitis B antigen protein. The efficacy of vaccine is up to 98%. We have to keep 0.5 ml in dose intramuscularly at the interlateral aspect of the thigh. Coming over the, the hepatitis B used to be have thiomycin as a preservative. Around 1998, there was a controversy about the hepatitis B vaccine because of thiomycin. There are many studies saying that thiomycin was related to the autism and neurodevelopment delay. Because of this concern, American Academy of Pediatrics and US Public Health Service issued a joint statement to remove the thiomycin as a preservative. Though later many studies were conducted as a, on the same and concluded that it has no correlation with the autism. Comparing the hepatitis B vaccine containing thiomycin as a preservative on thiomycin free vaccine. If we're giving like uh, hepatitis B vaccine at 0, 1 and 6 months, the seroprotective rate is 99.1% and with thiomycin free also it's 99.1%. The safety and tolerability almost are the same, like mild malaise, fatigue, and fever will be there. In the cost of vaccine, the main issue is the cost. The thiomycin free vaccine is around 41 rupees, and the thiomycin free vaccine is around 5, 540 rupees. It is almost 12 times higher than the thiomycin containing vaccine. Coming to the timing, we have to give vaccine within 24, uh, within the 24 hours of the birth. What is the rationale behind that? The chronic, like, as per WHO position paper, they recommend the hepatitis vaccine should be given as early as within 24 hours because the risk of chronicity is high with the perinatal infection. The vaccine and the vaccine efficacy is very high, like almost 90%. If we give vaccine within proper as per the proper schedule, we can prevent the downstream up to 90%. Coming to the let's coming to the immunoglobulin. The immunoglobulin we can give as when the this is a perinatal exposure and occupational exposure. The dose is 0.5 ml in units and up, it, it, it is 0.06 ml per kg in adults. It provides the, its protection lasts for three to six months and ideally we should give it within the 12 hours. We can give up to seven days, but the efficacy of hepatitis immunoglobin after 40, 40 hours is not known. Coming to the immunoprophylaxis in preterm, the, the rate of zero conversion in preterm baby and baby less than 200 gram is less. So we have to give one extra dose in these babies. At the age of one month, the response is similar to the term babies. Like if we give one vaccine, like any vaccine at the one month of age, the, in preterm babies, the, the response, immunological response will be the same as the term babies. So hepatitis in, in these preterm babies also, hepatitis immunoglobin is required to give as early as within 12 hours. And hepatitis, one additional dose of hepatitis B vaccine should be given. So total four doses we have to give in preterm babies. In, sum, in summary, we fortunate to contribute a chapter on congenital infection, including hepatitis B in textbook of clinical neurology by IAP and NNF. So in this, we will discuss about the how to approach a baby with hepatitis B, mother hepatitis B In term baby like weighing more than 200 grams, we have to give hepatitis B vaccine and immunoglobin within 12 hours of birth. Preferably 12 hours, we can give up to 24 hours also. Second dose at one to two months and third dose at six months. Then we have to check the title and hepatitis surface antigen at the age of nine months. In preterm baby, we have followed the same schedule, but we have to give one extra dose. At nine months, we will check the hepatitis surface antigen status and title of anti-HBS. If titles are more than 10 and status is negative, then there's no need to do further testing or no need of any further management. If status is negative and titles are less than 10, we can give one extra dose and we can check, check title after two months. If titles are more than 10, then baby is protected. If titles are still less than 10, then we can give additional two doses, then we have to check the titles. Even if the titles are still low, then we have to refer to baby to the hepatologist for further management. If, if state, uh, like, surface antigen came positive, 
and we have to follow and evaluate for chronic liver disease. Coming for follow up, the risk, the risk of transmission in hepatitis sufficient in positive mother is less than two percent if immunoprolex is given properly. If infected, the if infected the hepatitis C antigen positivity and high level viral replication persists for years. This leads to chronicity and increases the risk of chronic liver disease and malignancy. This needs a regular follow up under periodic gastroenterologist. Coming to the vaccine, the healthcare professional, we have to give vaccine at zero, one, and six months schedule. The when we give like one complete the one vaccine, one schedule, if we can check the titer. If titer one once titers are achieved and the dead person is protected for life. If titers have dropped, like it, even if titers are dropped, there's no no need of periodic testing and booster dose in this way, in this individuals. Even if, but if like healthcare professionals immunocompromised or having comor comorbidities like chronic kidney disease, only then we have to give booster dose. Otherwise, there's no need of doing periodic testing or booster doses in healthcare professionals. Coming to needle stick injury, the, we have to check look for three factors: the patient status, the status vaccination status of the exposed healthcare professional, and vaccination response of the healthcare professional. If the Healthcare professional is unvaccinated. We have to give hepatitis immunoglobulin and full hepatitis B vaccination. If vaccinated and titer is more than ten, then nothing we need nothing specific to be done. If vaccinated and titer is less than ten, then we can we have to give immunoglobulin and we have to give vaccination also. If vaccinated but titers are not known, then we have to check the status and uh, then we have to do, do take step accordingly. If like healthcare professional is already hepatitis subcentric and positive or carrier. Then no need of possible exposure prophylaxis. So, like with the prophylaxis, we can decrease the transmission up to two percent. And breastfeeding is safe. We can breastfeeding in the preterm babies. If we we have to give vaccine and immunoglobulin within within twelve hours up to twenty four hours, we can give in preterm baby. We have to give one extra dose of vaccine. Thymosis is safe. We there is no relation of thymosis with the autism. Healthcare professional. There is no need of periodic testing or titer for looking for titers, and there is no need of giving booster doses. Then in needle stick injury, we have to look the status. Of, uh, we have to check the status of healthcare profession. If healthcare profession is vaccinated and what's what's the titer? Accordingly, we have to decide for the booster dose or uh, immunoglobulin or vaccine. Twenty-eighth July is the uh, hepatitis B day, so almost 30, in every thirty second, one person is die because of hepatitis B. The target in target in by 2030 is that we have to eliminate. We are trying to eliminate the hepatitis B. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil, for presenting the pediatric perspective on uh, hepatitis. So 